Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Dialogue. I'm Tamur Shamil. In last uh, eight to ten days, uh, Prime Minister has visited two countries. The first one was Iran, uh, and Prime Minister's this was Prime Minister's first visit to Iran, where he met the Iranian president and also the Iranian supreme leader. Uh, the matters of mutual interest were discussed, and Prime Minister's visit to Iran was very important as far as the relations are concerned, and also. Uh, when we talk about the regional connectivity and regional cooperation with Iran, it was very important. Uh, with China, certainly, it is also very important and uh, the strongest uh, allies are Pakistan and China in the region. Uh, this is Prime Minister's second visit to China where he is uh, to attend the uh, Belt and Road Forum. He addressed the Belt and Road Forum as well. He came up with five points that were regarding tourism, climate and connectivity. We'll discuss about that as well. Uh, Having better relations and strong relations with the neighboring countries is very important for Pakistan. And we have seen uh, in recent days a very uh, proactive approach from the Pakistani side, uh, from the PTI government, by the Prime Minister himself. How important is meeting with the uh, leaders of the neighboring countries? What is the importance of Pakistan-Iran relations and Pakistan-China relations? Uh, with both countries, Pakistan is working uh, for connectivity with Iran, especially uh, Pakistan has been improving uh, its relations recently. The, relations is, uh, the relationship is already very strong, it's good, but improving the ties is also very important. Uh, looking at what is happening in the region, in Afghanistan for that matter, uh, better cooperation and collaboration is need of the hour. Uh, Pakistan China relations, as I said earlier, are as important as anything for Pakistan as, and also for the Chinese authorities. We're going to discuss about Pakistan's foreign policy, its relations with the neighboring countries, Iran and China, with our special guest in the studios. Our first guest is Ambassador Asif Durrani, renowned senior diplomat and an expert on Pakistan's foreign policy. So welcome to the show. Our second guest is Lieutenant General Retired Naim Lodi, a former defense minister as well and a renowned senior analyst on the security affairs. So welcome to the show. Ambassador Durrani, starting with uh, Iran's visit, Prime Minister's visit to Iran and now to China. Uh, how do you see these both budgets and they were planned uh, one after another? What is the significance of the, the budgets and keeping in mind the time that first was Iran and then was China? I think uh, neighbors are always important and uh, so I take it that uh, Prime Minister has chosen to visit uh, Iran and uh, then to China. Uh, China, he has, uh, this is his second visit, uh, but Iran, yes, his first visit ever since he took over as Prime Minister. And uh, of course, this visit uh, took place under the shadow of a tragic incident which happened two months ago in Iran. So there were some harsh statements coming from Iran. And of course, then uh, Pakistan also put the record straight. and. Uh, things were uh, brought under control. Then this is the beauty of a relationship between Pakistan and Iran, that uh, the relationship uh, is durable. It has survived many ups and downs. And I have said it earlier also that uh, Pakistan and Iran have always stood by each other. And I think uh, this visit was the hallmark that uh, Prime Minister, uh, when he met uh, the Supreme Leader and the President, uh, the <coughs> best thing which uh, came out uh, from the Iranian side was also that they would not allow uh, their uh, country uh, to become a source of uh, problems of Pakistan. And same assurances were given by the Prime Minister that Pakistani soil would not be allowed to be used by uh, Western interest against the Iranian interests. In fact, Prime Minister went one step ahead. He said no one would be allowed to use Pakistan soil uh, against a third country. Right. Uh, so this also gives a signal to all the countries in the neighbor, mm. neighborhood, um, including India. So I think uh, Prime Minister's uh, message was very clear that Pakistan wants peace. It has suffered a lot during the past four decades because of the Afghanistan situation. Pakistan uh, is also a victim of uh, injustice because of the Kashmir and uh, the, our relationship with India are uh, quite sour since past seven decades. So in this whole background, when you see, so uh, uh, Prime Minister has covered half of our neighborhood uh, 
Iran and China. Uh, with India, we have the kind of an adversarial relationship, and but uh, Prime Minister's message was that we want peace, but peace uh, according to this uh, sovereign equality, which is the norm of the international uh, uh, principle right. and politics. And, and, and General Lodi, also Prime Minister proposed a joint resolve to combat terrorism uh, in the border areas, and as Ambassador Durrani said, the uh, bordering areas between Pakistan and Iran have been disturbed. Uh, some terrorist organizations have been operating in these areas, and it has been a concern for both countries. Uh, what happened in Ormara was very disturbing for Pakistan. Uh, 14 innocent people lost their lives over there. Uh, so bringing up this issue with Iran and that too openly, while President Rouhani was sitting with the Prime Minister, how do you see this, uh, this gesture and this speech? I think it's a great achievement, especially agreeing on this, uh, you know, joint uh, task force to look after the thing. But I think we uh, we should all, and bo both the leaderships of Iran and Pakistan must uh, think on one thing, that whenever some high dignitary from Iran has to come to Pakistan, as it happened two and a half, three years away, ago, once their president was, was about coming. to come, right. and now this time he was to go, and that incident happens. Uh, whereas we are all very well aware that what is actually a false flag operation. False flag operation actually means that some other party does a thing and then it is some, somebody else is maligned. So in my own opinion, and I, I, I don't say that, um, uh, I will not overemphasize it, uh, Pakistan's reaction uh, should have been a bit muted. It is my opinion. Right. Uh, because as the Prime Minister was saying, it would have been enough to say that this thing will be discussed with the uh, president or Iranian authority that why this thing is happening and we did not had the guts to actually name the real perpetrator which are Indians. We know that of course uh, Kalbushin was operating from Iranian soil but right. he was an Indian and whosoever did this uh, uh, later on especially once uh, Modi in his uh, speeches he has been you know boasting that uh, this is how we operate, uh, these are his words. So which means he was alluding to these two incidents, Koita and Urmara, which means they have something to do with it. So not naming India and naming Iran uh, very clearly, uh, I don't know. Um, uh, there should have been a, uh, some restraint as far as I am concerned. I think it was because the reaction of that, just before Palwama, there was an attack on Iranian guard and they immediately said to probably uh, in, the, in, in, in uh, diplomatic norms, right, right. this must be the way that the way you are treated, the, you are treated the same way. We and by the way, Sushma Suvraj, the external affairs minister, she visited Iran and she had a stopover over there and the optics were very interesting. Th that is one and also remember that, uh, you know, our own uh, foreign ministry said something is going to happen between 16 and 20th. Right, right. And these two incidents happened just within that mm -hmm. bracket one. And then Sushma Suraj, uh, Suraj later on said that we, 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 we were not able to kill uh, Pakistani soldiers mm -hmm. in our surgical strike. Right. And she gave this statement just after this incident. So all these things, if you connect them, I think it was amply clear that who's the actual perpetrator uh, behind all this. But anyway, all said and done, I think uh, things have smoothened up. And hopefully, if we, we, we must uh, keep it at that level, rather uh, improve the uh, things in a way. We must try to find out which are the powers which would not like good relations of Iran and Pakistan to prosper and to take place. And it is obvious, uh, you know, who are those. Um, and the more we talk at the highest level, the better uh, results are likely to accrue. Uh, so I think openness, talking to each other, and uh, if there are any, you know, uh, perceptions or anything that must be discussed uh, so that, uh, you know, the fears are elevated. So uh, these are the things I think uh, uh, talking and talking more, talking at a higher level, people right. to people contact and uh, the way uh, some, uh, I think, uh, MOUs have mm. taken place, <coughs> uh, barter trade and uh, whatever is allowed, right. uh, that we must uh, enhance with Iran. And one thing more which I would like to add that erecting fences all around actually does not give you security. Mm. It was all right as far as uh, Afghanistan is concerned because we have a very long thousand of years of history where people were going and coming and so you wanted to have that thing. Physical fences, building walls, all around and then thinking that we will be secure. <coughs> that is a very archaic uh, way of uh, thinking, uh, security thought. So I, I don't contribute to that. So do you so think that this joint mechanism, let's say, to combat terrorism, and keep a check on perhaps the border area, 
is very important and satellites can be used for that. Satellites, uh, there's so many uh, other there ways, are many ways there are uh, technical means this. nowadays. Right. So you don't erect physical fences. Actually, you should be having more people-to-people -people contacts. Right. And uh, with Iran, we have no such problem. We have a proper visa system and everything. With Afghanistan, the thing was very, because of the easement rights, uh, the people were going and coming very freely, so probably that thing was required. So uh, I personally am against this uh, you know, idea of <laughs> erecting another fence another on fence, the right. Iranian border. Right. Uh, yeah. Ambassador Durrani, uh, this point that we should have been more, let's say, vocal about naming India while Pakistan, uh, Pakistani Prime Minister was visiting Iran, do you, do you agree with that in diplomatic norms, let's say? Uh, can we do that? Because this is an issue and we all know that India has been very actively uh, supporting the terrorist organizations. Well, uh, I don't know what had been transpired before issuing this statement, but uh, Iranian leadership uh, knows this, and uh, they know our views at the highest level, uh, which has been conveyed to them, uh, and uh, it is uh, 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 repeated uh, at every official visit. Uh, Iran has yet to come up with explanations how come uh, Kalbushin Yadav and his operatives were active in and using Iranian soil. So uh, we have yet to get uh, a satisfactory answer from Iran. Same is true about Ormara incident. Uh, I think uh, uh, it is for the first time that Pakistan made it public and Foreign Minister also uh, made it public that uh, uh, people came from the Iranian Balochistan. And uh, of course, they were Pakistani Baluch, which uh, was stated by the Foreign Minister. But the fact that uh, they were staying in Iran, uh, and there's also a history of our uh, disgruntled Baluch uh, youth, they have been going to Iran and Baluchistan, they have been taking shelter. And uh, we know that Iranian authorities were in the know of their presence uh, in the Iranian Balochistan. As General Saab has rightly pointed out, under the easement rights, uh, both sides, uh, people, they uh, straddle on both sides of the border, uh, 60 kilometers on each side. But normally, that uh, restriction is not adhered to strictly by the people. They cross. Uh, um, the, the limits of 60 kilometers, and they can uh, once they enter Iran or when, once they enter uh, uh, Pakistani Balochistan, right. they <laughs> can go anywhere. <clears throat> but this is not the point. The point is uh, there is dissatisfaction in Iran and Balochistan, and those uh, uh, incidents are taking place on and off, and uh, the Iranian authorities have to find a political solution to that. So that is very important uh, from that point of view. Uh, regarding uh, uh, raising it or publicly, uh, I don't subscribe to that. I think that uh, we we can, yes, uh, uh, through our diplomatic channels out there, we have been doing that. Iranians at times have been quite, uh, uh, you can say, impatient, like they did uh, about this 13th, uh, 13th February incident uh, near Zaidan Khash Road. And now, mind you, the Zaidan Khash uh, is uh, almost 120 kilometers away from the Pakistan border. Mm -hmm. So uh, from there, if an incident takes place, and uh, then later, uh, later on it turned out that they were Iranian Baluch, they were not Pakistani Baluch. So therefore, the problem is there. And uh, Iran has to take remedial measures, as I said it earlier. So uh, there is a problem, but that problem at the state level, we don't call it a state dispute. It is an irritant. It is an irritant uh, because of the dissatisfaction of the people in the Iranian borders. So, governance perhaps can can address this issue on uh, both sides. Let's say. Yes. Right. We'll continue our discussion on Prime Minister's visit to uh, China, and uh, this is an, a very important visit. Prime Minister's second visit to China, uh, and he is there on his four days visit. Uh, there he attended the Belt and Road Forum, met uh, several dignitaries, and uh, how important. This was it is for Pakistan. We'll discuss about this after this break. Stay with us.
passion for polo will be the highest on the world's highest polo ground. Chandur invites visitors to experience a traditional polo tournament between the teams of Chitral and Gilgit. The tournament is held on Chandur Pass, the highest polo ground in the world, at 3,700 meters above sea level. The first time a polo tournament took place on the Chandur Pass was in 1936. It is a place unique and exotic in itself, surrounded by some of the most spectacular mountain scenery in the world. The event marks the annual rivalry between the teams of Chitral and Gilgit. The polo tournament has some added attractions for the visitors, trout fishing at the nearby streams and lakes, and a festival of folk dances and music of northern Pakistan. The event in itself offers a fascinating insight into the lifestyle of the people of this region. Their culture and indigenous customs are a delight to behold for the visitors. Crystal clear lakes, snow-covered mountains, alpine flowers, and vast stretches of green grass are added attractions. Fairs and festivals of Pakistan. Welcome back. Pakistan and China are strategic partners and China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is a mega economic activity that Pakistan and China are working on and we also expect that not just this would not just uh, benefit Pakistan and China but CPEC would also benefit other countries in the region. Uh, there are spoilers, there are opportunities and there are challenges as well. We are going to discuss about this with our special guest in the studios. Uh, General Lodi talking about Prime Minister's visit to China. Uh, this is his second visit. Last was in uh, last year. How important is this visit of uh, BRF? And uh, while well, he also met several dignitaries over there, what do you, how do you see it? It has got two, uh, the same two aspects which you have brought up yourself. One is reg regarding BR, uh, BRI and the CPAC. CPAC is a flagship uh, project of BRI and secondly of uh, bilateral relations with uh, China and especially at a, at a time once we are facing some difficulties as far as economy is concerned and other pressures are also uh, building up. Uh, you know this BRA forum, uh, the last one which was I think in um, 17, uh, that mainly focused on what it is, the, the project itself, what is the philosophy, philosophy of uh, shared prosperity and extended neighborhood. Right. So um, any, anyone who understands this philosophy, they can really benefit from it. Uh, otherwise, there are many detractors, as you said yourself, uh, and uh, Americans have openly said that we are in competition, or, you know, word competition with China and Russia as far as their uh, future is concerned. So naturally, they would, uh, they can say anything. Uh, they can um, benefit from whatever, you know, uh, maybe some of the followers of BR, but actually they would not like uh, uh, ec uh, economic expansion or political expansion of China in any direction. Uh, for, right. for, for the simple reason that we understand. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Pakistan can benefit uh, from BRI only if, as I said, if they understand the spirit, uh, shared prosperity, extended neighborhood. And the second important thing is that we must realize that we have to plan the things ourselves. I mean, there is an opportunity given by, the, by, by Chinese uh, uh, you know, philosophy but they are not going to decide for you uh, that what industries you should put, where you should put those industries, and how you should uh, expand this your uh, CPAC uh, benefits. Because we understand that unless there is peace in Afghanistan, CPAC cannot extend towards Central Asia, and then Russia cannot use this route and all that. So I think Pakistan has to think a lot and do a lot uh, herself to actually uh, uh, benefit from the fruits of uh, BRI and uh, all that. The, the other aspect which you, you pointed out yourself that it was very useful this visit 
because he 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 he, he met many other uh, right. leaders Certainly. he must right. have uh, met putin uh, which i have not heard hmm. uh, some african leaders and uh, all the important uh, central asian leaders uh, as well uh, right. i heard the, uh, the turkish uh, uh, head was also there so i think this is very the side meetings are very important some of the things which you uh, otherwise you have to go to a country and you can discuss there uh, one important thing which i would like to highlight is that chinese although they keep saying that we are not at all interested in any confrontation and we are just interested in sharing prosperity and extending our uh, you know economic uh, clout but as somebody said that you may not be interested in war war may be interested in you so if the detractors are openly saying that we will not for example india has openly said that we will not allow cpec to uh, flower and they did not attend the brf they this, did not this attend the last forum. actually their national security advisor even um, uh, you know mentioned about some amount that we have set aside the, these many dollars uh, million dollars to make sure that we this uh, cpec is scuttled so which means that we'll have to do all this against a certain resistive mindset and accordingly we must plan our things uh inshallah we will succeed uh, cpec will uh, take off as a part of bri but we must ask china that because of cpec which is a common project of china and pakistan pakistan is undergoing certain difficulties so we those must be shared by china because the cpec is not pakistan's project is china pakistan corridor so if because of cpec we are under, we are uh, facing any pressures whether military or economic or political china must side with us uh, most of it he, he, she, they are but i think they they need to do more and, and certainly I'm. that pakistan is facing pressure from many sides and from um, from several countries ambassador durani uh, diplomatically how can we bring up this issue with the neighboring countries with india for that matter and also as general lodi said uh, there are big powers united states for that matter and they are not very happy with uh the china's uh, better relations with pakistan and other countries in the region how can we address this issue uh, <coughs> diplomatically this is not something new um, we were under pressure as far as our friendship with china is concerned long be- before i mean during the cold war while we, uh, we were still uh, following the uh, the american camp uh, there were pressures on pakistan uh, with regard to our friendship with china but what happened we we stick to our friendship with china and it gave dividends in fact uh, americans owe it to pakistan when our friendship with china paid off and we became a bridge between the united states right. and china so therefore uh, the durability of our policy lies in uh, sticking to our policy which is uh, principled with regard to its neighborhood it is uh, uh, unfortunate that with india we don't have a cordial relationship because of the history because of the injustice is done to the kashmiri people and that too uh, india itself uh, took the matter to the un it agreed for a blabisit but later on it uh, uh, regressed and it uh, uh, it did not honor its pledge made to the international community and even recently pakistan opened the kartarpur corridor and we have been asking for peace with yes. india in talks and yes. they have so i mean uh, the question is it takes two to tango we can uh, take our initiatives but if uh, the other side ie indians are not interested or they think something uh, different uh, so we cannot force them it's up to them but they know our address so they can come back to us uh, whenever they think they can and do you think that that would happen soon maybe or or well, india I think going to realize sooner circum- or later about the circumstances importance circumstances will dictate because india cannot live in isolation coming back to bri indians uh, <coughs> are trying to buy a couch they can but uh, i think it won't take them long they'll have to finally come round to the side the reason being that bri is a global initiative now it encompasses almost 122 countries and then uh, more than i think 39 heads of state and government they participated in this moot and uh, it's uh, it's importance is that china is spending billions and billions of dollars hundreds and billions of dollars on this initiative which has given uh, a new impetus to uh, to the slowing down of economies in europe in uh, in africa and others in fact it has injected 
uh, more vigor into the economic activity, which was earlier uh, slowing down. There was a slump. So it is, I think, the world owes it to China. And when you talk about BRI, then CPAC is the linchpin because uh, we link uh, China with uh, South Asia, Central Asia, and the Middle East, <coughs> which again, then when you link the, with the, to Gawadar and CPAC, so then you are linking to the rest of the world, at least to the Western world, we are linking. Now, uh, uh, and it has given a dividends. In fact, uh, 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 in the coming five years, uh, we should see tremendous results, and it is going to be a game changer for Pakistan and for the region. And uh, then I think Indians would see the reason and the rationale that why should they be, uh, why shouldn't they be joining this initiative? And then that is the time I think I'm uh, optimistic that Indians would, uh, despite all uh, uh, irritants which we have, the dispute we have with them, they'll see uh, uh, some sanity into uh, bringing stability to this relationship, which because of India's uh, uh, misadventure, uh, they have uh, put the peace of this region at risk. At risk. And, and India's own existence for that matter. Yes. So here is a person, India's Prime Minister, General Odi, who can put India's ex existence on stake just for mere political gains. While we have neighbors like this and what is happening in Afghanistan, do you think that sporadic attacks on China-Pakistan economic corridor or in Balochistan can damage Pakistan's or China's resolve to work on this activity? Um, 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 they can maybe uh, put a caution on the resolve, but they cannot really make a dent or a damage because the resolve is too strong uh, of both the countries. Uh, uh, Chinese uh, resolve, China, they have shown their resolve in the, in the past as far as their economic progress is concerned. And Pakistan, they have shown their uh, resolve to resist any such forces which, which are inimical to whatever we do. So uh, I agree with him that uh, India would have joined actually the CPAC uh, BRI uh, earlier had the CPAC been not a part of it because it passes through Pakistan and BJP's uh, face of RSS and uh, their views are well known against Pakistan, against Muslims. So that is that is that has become an irritant. Now the way Indian government is uh, moved for the last uh, in the last tenure and the way they they, they are you know their slogans and rhetoric, which, whatever they are uh, raising during elections, I think it is going to take some time uh, before they realize that uh, you must have heard, you must have seen that their their civil society and some of their uh, good, uh, you know, thinkers, they have already realized it and they are asking India that what, what the hell you are doing that such a good opportunity is just, you know, um, in front of you and you are missing that. Their writers are writing on this, their economists are writing on this. Uh, but because <coughs> this newly formed alliance between America and India, they have certain, uh, you know, common interests and one of the interests is, uh, you know, the, the common interest in this region becomes uh, India from their own perspective. They don't want uh, this CPAC. Uh, because of uh, uh, our relationship and Kashmir and other points. Uh, Americans, uh, even if they don't say, I'm sure they would not like to have CPAC uh, because of other reasons, uh, which they have openly said that we want competition and all that. So I think for some time, uh, Indians will not join it. Uh, and one, once they say some time, not before five, six years, unless this government, this government is uh, difficult to change their mind, but the next government maybe. But by in the next five years, you have said yourself, and I agree with it, that this government is likely to damage themselves so much uh, because of their internal policies, which they have, you know, openly they are doing with the minorities and all minorities, Dalits and Muslims and Sikhs and everybody, even Christians, and what they are doing with their neighborhood. Uh, even this uh, Sri Lankan thing, I think uh, ultimately you would know that uh, the, the, the things will point towards India, what they are trying to do with Pakistan and all around. And even some uh, Sri Lankan officials have been vocal about it. Right, they have said that. So I think ultimately they, they will realize, but how much time it takes, my own uh, take is not before four or five years. Right. Uh, they will try, th try out everything uh, and they will fail, inshallah. Uh, that's why I'm saying that, uh, as you said, that it, it, whether it can have a um, you know, dent on our resolve, Right. Uh, we will build CPAC, we will build Gwadar, inshallah, but against a resistive mindset, against some physical resistance, yes, something will keep happening in Balochistan and all that. 
we have fared that before. Uh, we will face it again. And we will come out successfully. I'm very, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm quite hopeful right. that this is how it's going to come out. Right. Uh, Ambassador Rani, uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a, is a big platform. Uh, and this organization also says, if you look at the clauses of SCO, it clearly says that all the members should abide by the, by the SCO <coughs> laws and all those clauses. And no member state would support or finance the terrorists. But looking at what... Shah Mahmood Qureshi, Pakistan's foreign minister, said when Prime Minister left for uh, uh, Iran, he said that these people, these terrorist organizations, they have their presence in Afghanistan. Perhaps they also have their training camps in the territory inside Iran. They have their links in Afghanistan. And that's what we are saying, that perhaps they are also supported and financed by the Indians. Being a member of SCO and boycotting BRF, what is this duplicity? Well, I think uh, BRI is not uh, linked with uh, SEO. It's not conditional. Right, of course. And right. SEO rules uh, do not govern on BRI hmm. or vice versa. So I think there India has the, uh, has the leverage. They can uh, join or may not join. But uh, 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 on SEO, you are right. I think... Uh, uh, Indians uh, uh, have been boasting during the election campaign and even before about their involvement uh, in our Balochistan. Mm. And uh, <coughs> they, some of the disgruntled Baloch youth have been visiting India also. They have been in the public. So uh, India is not uh, playing a good role, a good neighborly role, mm. definitely. And uh, this is not going to help, and it has not helped India. In fact, it has been quite an embarrassment for the Indians when they uh, boast about, uh, or when they talk about, and when they criticize Pakistan about terrorism, which uh, Pakistan has suffered a lot in the whole in the region, in the neighborhood, and it has put up a stiff resistance against the terrorists and extremists. But India itself, rather than helping Pakistan, has been stabbing Pakistan in the back through Balochistan. And Kalbushan Yadav is a glaring example of that. And similarly, yes, Prime uh, Minister Qureshi referred to uh, involvement of uh, elements in uh, Afghanistan and in Iran. His, he clearly indicated towards India that uh, Indians are, in fact, uh, instigating those people. They are <laughs> helping them through money. It's basically money through which India is uh, helping. Uh, their national security advisor, Ajit Dole, has, been, uh, has said it publicly that they will uh, support the Baloch dissidents in uh, Pakistan. So it's a blatant interference in Pakistan's internal affairs. There's no doubt about it. And I think uh, this uh, will be uh, quite uh, harmful for the stability of the region. Right. And Pakistan has patiently handled this, but Pakistan has effectively handled this whole situation. Even if the Indians want to sabotage it, um, you can see that this uh, CPAC project has been coming up very uh, uh, constructively and very, uh, you can say, uh, without any hindrance. Uh, despite the fact that there have been certain casualties, there have been terrorist uh, acts, uh, perpetrated along the CPAC route, but uh, our resolve was uh, quite determined. So we didn't give, a, 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 we did not budge uh, to whatever those uh, pressures we were put under. So I think uh, we will succeed. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, right. uh, General Rudi, this time Prime Minister Imran Khan, he uh, brought up five points at the Belt and Road uh, Forum. Uh, that was, the five points were climate change, uh, tourism corridor, which is a very important, I would say, a, a component of this, people-to-people -people contact, intercultural understanding, and anti-corruption campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, this this anti-corruption is also very important. Uh, in China, they are, have seen that uh, very strict on this anti-corruption campaign, and perhaps we can also learn something from them. That's what the Prime Minister said. Mm -hmm. But talking about uh, starting with the uh, tourism first, uh, huge population in China, if they are visiting Pakistan, and there is more people-to-people -people interaction, uh, this thing can take the Pakistan-China relations to a new level.
to a next level. What do you think about this? True, it can, but uh, as I said uh, initially, once we were talking about uh, this thing, that we we need to do a lot. Hmm. I mean, if you really want people to tour your country, you need to develop those sites uh, which are worth visiting, and there are many in Pakistan. Many you can have, you know, religious tourism. You can have uh, you have very good sightseeing in Kashmir and uh, northern, northern areas. areas. Sin for that matter, and in, in winters can. Even, even <coughs> people would like to see the deserts of Chulistan in, in, in winters. Absolutely. Uh, you have a lot to show in Multan, in, uh, beside mangoes and mm. other things. So there are two, three basic requirements. Uh, he mentioned it there, good enough. But actually he has to come back and tell our own people that what needs to be done. You need a good infrastructure, the roads, the rail links, uh, good <coughs> transport to go, go to <coughs> these areas. <coughs> then good hotels uh, so that people can be looked after the way they want to you know stay here in pakistan we have got to uh, be sensitive to that and then showing those places uh, we know that how the world you know uh, what they do is that they just uh, like like london eye is just rotating thing and you are just looking at london and there some you you go to a place and they put put a coin in something and stamp that area area's uh, emblem or something so these things we have learned, from, we know a lot, uh, you know, those who have uh, uh, visited various places in the world. But here the problem is there is no facility where somebody from outside can come, easily access these areas, stay there, and somebody is there to guide them, right. show them about the history and all that. So without that, uh, I don't think we'll be able to attract uh, many uh, tourists. Just we to need to do a lot. Just actually. for the information for the, our, our audience and for, right. for the panelists as well, recently we did, we did a talk show uh, with the Tech Valley, which is an organization uh, working and collaborating with the government of Pakistan, specifically in KPK at the moment. And they're doing all this that we have just mentioned. Uh, they would make sure that uh, we have a tourism which is on the international standards and people would be coming in. So right. what I just mean to say is that that is happening at the moment. In KPK, and, starting and, with KPK. And a lot and of co co coordination that required between your airline and international airlines. airlines. Exactly. You That's see true. what Turkey is doing. You must have heard of so many people going towards uh, Turkey nowadays. Right. Just because they have, they have made certain programs where the airline and the tourist uh, department, they have collaborated right. and uh, they are offering people at very cheap rates that, okay, we'll uh, look after your stay and all that. They can call groups and all that. So similarly, you have to carry out some uh, marketing, uh, but before that, you have to carry out a lot of uh, you know infrastructural uh, uh, things uh, so that uh, people are really attracted towards the, uh, the, to this thing. And Mr. Drani, and people-to-people -people contact is, is very important. At the moment, uh, mostly people in Pakistan they know China because of let's say the the reports in the media, uh, press conferences and all that, though many have been visiting China, but still more is to be done. We need, we want, we would like to have more Chinese in Pakistan visiting Pakistan, more Pakistanis uh, easily going to China and visiting places over there. How would that help both countries and strengthen the idea of Pakistan-China relations? I think it's picking up. If you uh, see it 10 years ago, then, uh, uh, then we can uh, really see that uh, what difference it has made uh, during the past 10 years. And now there are thousands of Chinese uh, who are here in uh, Pakistan. Some are uh, for long-term visas, uh, working on projects. And uh, uh, most of them are uh, tourists. Yeah. And uh, from Pakistan, a uh, lot many tourists are going, as well as business people. So uh, the business between China and Pakistan has picked up very well. Of course, the, uh, the balance of trade is heavily tilted towards China. But for that also, China has taken measures uh, about which there are certain items where uh, those would be imported by China duty-free from Pakistan. This is going to add another $1 billion into uh, Pakistan's uh, trade bill, So, which means that uh, things are picking up. People-to-people -people contacts uh, need substance. Like tourism, uh, you need infrastructure, so people-to-people -people contact also Yes, we, China is to be introduced in Pakistan. It is already introduced as an iron brother. Uh, every Pakistani knows that China <coughs> is, a, is a trusted friend. Same is the case in China. When it comes to Pakistan, they, 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 they talk about Pakistan as a trusted friend. So that is there at the political level, is we have best of the relationship. At the economic level, it is picking up. And then uh, CPAC is the glaring example of that. 
Then people to people, when you say that the languages are sometimes better, but now with the Chinese also learning English, it is becoming easier. You will be surprised to know now there are many marriages between Pakistanis Pakistan and Chinese. Chinese. Right. So, and there are many commercial offices which have been opened in China and vice versa here. So it is picking up really very well. As if you compare it with the other nations, I think now China leads the, the table. So the, that's quite promising. Right. Uh, uh, General Lodi, the anti-corruption campaign, Prime Minister interestingly has brought up this, this issue on several platforms. And I think whenever he's visiting some country, he brings up this issue of anti-corruption. Discussing it with China over there, how do you think that Pakistan and China can collaborate in this, this area? Actually, uh, and bringing transparency right. to CPEC? You know, my own take is uh, that uh, the two systems are very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we try to emulate China, we will never be able to do it. Because there, if the top man wants something to be done, it is done by evening. Here, if the top man wants to do something, he will never be able to do it in a year. Right. For the simple reason that uh, in, in democracy, especially the type of democracy we are in, where uh, there's a, you know, the political opposition uh, goes to such an extent that they don't even care about uh, the national interest. For example, uh, we have all heard that there are people who are selling uh, narcotics around schools. Uh, you must have heard about it. Uh, what special laws have we made to make sure that th this doesn't happen? Mm. We, we must have, uh, you know, uh, by now, created some laws to give a severe punishment to such people. But you cannot pass laws because you have such a, such a, such a bad relation with the opposition and your numbers are so thin. So I think as far as Chinese, uh, you know, uh, the, the way they deal with corruption and the way we deal with corruption, uh, corruption there are two different types. Two, right? two different, altogether Situation. two different areas, two different systems, two, uh, two different approaches. Uh, we, we, like, we would like to have that. But we cannot, for the time being, I would just say that we'll have to uh, dream that we can have a, a, you know, a, a laws like China. Uh, it is not possible, at least not in this uh, dispensation, the way the numbers are, unless some party gets a good majority and they can make their own laws. And especially as long as the relationship between uh, political entities is the way it is. Uh, so actually, this is the thing which has made the country stand still. You cannot move a step in any direction. Because no, no, nobody, I, I wonder how they will pass the, uh, the budget. Let us see how that happens. So, uh, so that, let's that see is the, a sad thing. The, the <laughs> challenges are there and, and there is this hope as well. And let's hope for the best. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Ambassador Durrani, pleasure having you on the show. Thank, thank you for you. your time. Thank General you. Lodi, pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all from today's show. See you next time. Khuda.